Uh, so now it's the big one, Johnny. The game we've all been waiting for. And I know you're on holidays, but you've, you've timed the holiday nicely that you're just getting back in time for Sunday to head to Crow Park for Dublin v Kildare. And this, I'll put it to you, is probably the, the, the best Kildare team since the real good team you played in. Um, what do you make of them? That They've made giant strides in the last 12 months under Keane O'Neill, haven't they? Uh, they have, yeah, they have. It's, it's, you know, they, it was free fall there for a couple of years. Went to division, went from division one to division three, and and uh, you know have 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 clawed their way back into the top flights, which is which is, is, is very promising. Um, you know, albeit the, 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 a few new lads, but it, with with the same bunch of players, you know, that had been there for you know on the, the, a lot of young team, but you know, lads have had that would have a bit of experience. So they're doing it, and you know. But it's a massive ask of the month on Sunday and saying all that. I mean, you know, obviously you be you want to leave a little your heart to one side for the moment and, and look at the evidence is there. You know, we look at the the, the two uh, championship um, appearances so far. You know, while they've been consistent and, and good performance by Kildare, but both teams they beat uh, maybe to a lesser extent. Be nice league, now. Be nice now. Days. I'm a mead man. Yeah, well, they didn't go out of the championship. Um, you know, we, we probably would feel a little bit aggrieved uh, over the Donegal game. A couple of the seasons they went away, but you know, realistically, you know, not super proud of the game by any stretch. So where can they exactly? We don't really know, and that's that's sort of taken off the, taking putting on the, the hat and and kind of thinking with the head for you know, no one would love them. As, more to win on, on Sunday, we said, but I just, you know, you have to go on the facts that it's like while I was coming out after the mid game with a pep in my step, and you know, maybe thinking that Dublin, Dublin playing Carlo weren't, you know, had the hunger, had the desire, and then you, you, you look at them again for me, and you're thinking, you know, where what chance to have Kadair. But I think the one thing Kadair have and, and have really, have really focused on is a huge pace. Um, and particularly in the fall, and you know, to compete at that level, you need to have that. You need runners off the shoulder. You need to go at Dublin, um, and and we have that pace, which we haven't had, in, you know, in in a good few years. And you know, the forwards are, are really having, you know, putting up high scores. And Carl McNally seems to be rejuvenated in his role. And you know, we we've got a few players back. Daniel Flynn has had a, a tired time with injury and coming back from Australia, but he's back to full fitness. Kevin Feeney. You know, again, had a stint in, in across the the way from each other, but took him maybe twelve months to get back to the playing playing the for what he's capable of playing. But and 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 Harry Boffy coming back, so there's a lot of pluses for the Kildare team, but it's a it's a major after one Sunday. I, I just don't know whether we we are just there yet, and say the team in an average age of 24. In maybe just a year or so, maybe too soon for them. But we expect them to really give Dublin a good game and put them to the pin of their collar in, in lots of ways. But I just think over 70 minutes, Dublin will have will have too much. And Johnny, you were one of the best forwards that we've seen in the last kind of two decades. You you know you took your man on. You were able to score from distance. You had everything. These Kildare forwards, for the first time in a long time, look like they have the potential to open up teams. Like Daniel Flynn was very good against Mead, scored 1-4. Colin McNally got 1-3. You've got Paddy Brophy, Niall Kelly, Fergal Conway. And then even in midfield, you've got a really good fielder who the mark seems to be invented for in Kevin Feely. And then you've got Tommy Mulek from Leakslip. So you have... There is the makings of a really good team here. Maybe this is the game where Kildare can really come of age. Yeah, and... and Absolutely, and and I know you know talk, talking to a few of the lads, they're really looking forward to it, and, and you know not buying into the to the way I'm thinking <laughs> by any stretch. They're they're going to go and have a right good cut, and they, don't get me wrong, they have the capabilities of doing of doing the uh, doing damage. But I just think you know maybe just be ready for it just yet, and I. They're very capable of, of, of causing an upset, no doubt about it, and you know, they'll need a bit of luck, but you know, so we not you need that and um, and the other thing with this group of players as well, the vast majority have had success against Dublin at underage and that is a that is a massive thing because it's the mentality teams going to play Dublin. I mean, you know, Dublin are, let's let's call it state state. This Dublin team was probably as good a team that ever have played the game. You know, we talk about the way Kerry teams and, and Dublin teams in the seventies and Kerry teams are the, the North, he's in Tyrone, he's, 
this this Dublin team is is, is as good as what what they ever played the game and so and with huge experience and you know you just look at their bench and, and see what they have. So in saying all that, you know they're going to be beaten at some stage. I think Kildare are hungry enough to beat them. You know that you know they, they've they've looked at nothing else and you know while while nobody getting ahead of themselves even early on they wanted to play Dublin the way the, the draw went. It's, you know, they want to play Dublin in the length of final. They see that as, as a, a barometer to measure themselves. And I expect them to have a right good go uh, on Sunday, have a right co happen and, and they, you know, maybe not show them the respect that other teams have. They'll, they'll set up defensively, but it won't be a, a pass the bus job. They'll, they'll go at them hard. And I think say we have the pace and the power and the finishing, the finishers inside. Um, but we need our big players to have a really big game. And, and uh, you know, we probably can't afford for for Niall Kelly or for Daniel or Kevin Keeney to have an off. If we do, we publish somewhere. So, Paddy, Johnny Doyle reckons that this is the best Dublin team that have ever played the game. Um, how do you see this going? First of all, uh, can we get Paddy Paris prices on the outright match betting and also the handicaps? Yeah, no, but it's a one to fourteen Dublin to win the match. It's a twenty to one the draw, and Kildare to win the match is nine to one at the minute. Um, Dublin minus nine is even money. The handicap draw is eleven to one, and if you want Kildare plus nine, it's ten to eleven currently. Well, I think I might want Kildare plus nine. What do you think? Yeah, I, I, I definitely be on that side as well. Um, like the one thing about this game is it, it is going to be a really good barometer as to where Kildare are. Like I think they're a much much better team than the team that got you know absolutely annihilated by Kerry two years ago or whatever it was. Like the big thing for Kildare here is that. Uh, like if you looked at the the West Mead game, I don't think they're going to be that naive, and they're not, like no one is ever going to set up like that against Dublin again to see where they are because the, that's what they'll do. They'll just beat you by 21, 22 points. But possession is going to be huge for Kildare. So what Kildare have really like based their whole year on, and like they've really made phenomenal use of the mark because you've got Kevin Feely who's performing unbelievably, and you've got Tommy Mulick as well, who's a big guy who can who can kind of win balls. So like the Kildare kickouts are going to be very very interesting because if they can win possession if they can kind of keep the ball off Dublin so what Dublin are really good at is you know getting Kilkenny on the ball and getting these kind of you know just popping passes around and nearly tiring teams out like if, if Kildare can get on the ball a lot um, if they can kind of that transition period if they happen to win marks if they win the ball back off Dublin like they do have scores in the team so like if I had to have a bet in this it would definitely be Kildare in the plus I probably will end up back in Kildare in the plus because I think they're a team really going the right way they're a team that can score they conceded three goals this year in the league, but like in no game did they concede more than one. And they, they even in championship this year, I think they conceded after 12 seconds against Tony Kingston or whatever. They never really looked like conceded a goal against Mead. They looked defensively sound, and I, I think they're in a really good place to, to come with a big performance against Dublin. Yeah, I, I'm sick of these bullshit pundits that come out with you know, ah, oh, West Mead have to have a go at Dublin. They can't just come and sit back. Like we heard Desi Dolan on the Sunday game, and you know I think Desi's a great fella, but you, you listen to these pundits and they're saying. You can't lower yourself, you know, publicly humiliate yourself by having. You have to have a go with a team. You can sit back. You have to play against a team. You have to set up against the team you're playing against. You don't see Jose Mourinho teams coming out and trying to to play Barcelona by by going man to man and trying to beat them football wise. You need to set up properly to the team you're playing. Am I right? Sorry about this rap now, but just really no, no, absolutely. Me. Like like it's absolute suicide to do what Westmead did against Dublin. You could see it from the first Conor Callan score. You were just kind of going if they'd play this open, they are going to concede twenty five plus points. Like there's just no two ways about it. I mean, like at least if you do what Carlo did, like and maybe people can say that Carlo didn't have a chance to win the match, but before Brendan Murphy got sent off, they were within what three or four or five, and they they gave him a decent game of it and like you know Carlo walked off the field with their head held high and they said you know we performed you know as, as, as well as we possibly could against Dublin like they're realists about it as well they're, they're, they're not saying if we go toe to toe to Dublin like we're going to go out and beat them like we have Paul Broderick but they have you know 15 All-Stars that, that win it every single year you know that kind of way and then like I, I, I could kind of there was a thought process during the week that Westmead had tried and gone and done it the other way but like when you saw what happened them last week as well I don't think it did them any good going out but getting absolutely hammered like that like at least at least in previous years in Leinster finals if they've lost by 13 or 14 they can kind of say they give them some sort of a game you know Now Johnny Doyle you told yeah, us I, earlier I, on I, the show I, that I you're agree. going to be the, you, you told us earlier on yeah, in the show on. that you're going to be the next Kildare manager so if, if <laughs> no, for argument's sake Keen O'Neill <laughs> Keen O'Neill picks up a, a bug on Saturday evening, he said, you get a phone call from the Clare County boy. He said, Johnny, will you step into Keane's place there for Sunday? And you have to set the team up the way you want. How do you set them up for this game? Well, I, I, 
you know, why, why is the parent being naive like like West Mead? And um, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a bit like <laughs> a bit like you, uh, going out and listening to the general public talking about playing open expansive football is is fine, and, and that's what the general public want to see. But you know, at the end of the year, you know, you won't be judged on what you know fair play to you went out and had a go. Um, and and we were better twenty five points. You know that's that's no good to anybody. Um, and uh, that was long term damage. I mean, Cadell got put to the sword by twenty odd points against Kerry, and it took time to get over that. And you're walking down because I've been on the end of all those tough days in Cork Park, and you're going you're walking down this main street and you your head bowed, embarrassed. So you know that's 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 not what anyone wants. And you do have to you have to try get the mix. If you go on past the bus and say, right, we're going to try stop Dublin. Um, you know, and we've, we've seen that in the past, the, the 2000 and, was it 2011, 74, 2000, when it all, it was just the worst football. It was four points to, to two at half time or something ridiculous like that. But you can't, you can't just go on it, but you have to get your defence right and you have to be able to, to, to take teams on the counter-attack. And I think that's what Dublin are very good at. Like, we listen to, to Brawley and these guys on the telly saying, you know, Dublin... Are, are, are very good offensively and they just go out and play beautiful football. They're the most defensive team you look at when you really study their defence. They get in behind the ball, they tackle hard. You know, if you skip in by one, you're met with two more half hours dropping really deep. Um, and that's that's the way, the way the game has gone. And you, if you go out um, to, to think that we're going to go and just take on Dublin or Kerry or any of these top teams, and um, with a, a, a hollow attack football, you're going to be going home very disappointed. So, for me, Keane uh, won't change a huge amount from the game and because he has got the defence right. You know, one day the centre half back just drops that little bit deep and uh, plays that sweep the wall. Tommy Mulek, you know, drops a little bit and, and you've, 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 um, you've David Slattery the last day, you know, Fergus Conway, who, who played most of his. Most of his airy football and underage football will be there the back and very, very strong in the tackle. These guys will, will drop back, you know, try over the and they're, the they're big, they're big, powerful men as well. Like you talk about your two midfielders that do drop back, Tommy Mulek, like they're they're strong, like they're they're well built for that that role. Yeah, they are, and, and particularly Fergie Conway is, is, is a very strong tackler and you know upper body strength is very is very good and he's a great engine. He might look to be modern. Um, for pace wise, you know, coming, but he's very, very. He goes hard in the last few minutes as he is in the first, and you know he's a huge engine on him and, and a terrific appetite for work, and that's the big thing around that middle leg. You've got to get those lads hunting for every ball, you know, and there has to be from Kilkenny. I mean, there has to be a little bit of lack of respect for Dublin, and I mean that in the best possible way. You know, as I said, you nobody know, disrespects what Dublin has, but it's a sort of a hate game comes from that they have to. Hunt these guys down and, and be in their face and, and put them under serious pressure to have any chance. Um, and I think they will do that. And um, they have that, as you said, that quality around the middle eight um, to, to, to cause them to cause them a bit of trouble. But on the offensive side, they're going to have to make sure every ball goes there because Dublin are really strong on the counter attack, and, and, and that's the one thing I'd be saying to them is you know you you once that once you have a pop of the post, every attack has to go there. And, you know, Cooks and they're not going to win a certain amount of of, of the kickouts from Cooks. And you know, you look back at last year's All Ireland, All Ireland semi final with Kerry. Even even you know, did Kerry put him under the throne and mark and put him on Cooks under a bit of pressure? But go back to the stats, and he did not own a serious amount of 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 uh, his kickouts. It's what happens then. It's pushing up. It's causing it's causing them um, back line under pressure. The half back line under pressure. And um, when they and meeting meet them with two or three players, and that's what they all carry are very good at. And um, you know, and the top teams, the tight ones, this world will put there. It's not so much the cooks and kick out, it's what happens next. And I think that's that for me is where Kadir, you know, need to be pressing them very high up the field. Um, albeit you, you can't leave the house down, and that's that's going to be the trick for Kadir. So lads, it's decision time and uh, I'm going to go first. I think Kildare will stay within that nine point handicap but I think an even safer bet, I think the way the game might be set up, I think back in Dublin under 23.5 points it's 8-11 to 11 with Paddy Power it's evens with a rival firm, uh, I think Dublin under 23.5 points against a good solid Kildare side I think if they get to 20 points, they'll be doing very well uh, Paddy O'Hearn, what's the best bet on Dublin v Kildare coupon? 
Yeah, I'll go Kildare plus nine. Um, we're slightly odds on. I think there's slightly odds against out there. So Kildare plus nine. I think they're going to come with a performance. And uh, if they do, you'd like to think they'll stay within the nine. Johnny Doyle, the best bet on the coupon? Yeah, well, look at the car. As I say, he, he, he handed the, the hard room to head. Um, and again, you know, big like yourself, Kildare plus nine, to me, is a, is a good bet. Uh, are they capable of it? Uh, yes, they are. I, I firm, firmly believe it, but I just think a lot of things will have to go right um, for Kildare and maybe a few things wrong for Dublin. Um, and we haven't seen that. We have to go on the evidence we've seen today, and not just this year, but over the last number of years. And I just think at the moment, Kildare might be just a little bit off them. So I think we've got three votes for Kildare plus nine there. And as we said, uh, Dublin may be under 23.5 points for me. And a quick shout, lads, for a first goal scorer and a man of the match shout. Uh, Paddy, we'll come to you first here. Uh, your your choice for first goal scorer and man of the match? Yeah, um, for both, I think I'm going to go Jack McCaffrey. I think he's, he's, he's due a big performance. And the way that Kildare set up it is, like if they are going to create goal chances, it's going to be um, all from kind of runners coming from deep. And he's proven before he can finish. So I think Jack McCaffrey for both. Okay, he's at 14 to 1 for first goal score. And I think he's actually the same for Man Match as well. Well, uh, Paul Mannion was very good to me uh, in the West Mead game. Man, sorry. 12. Okay, Paul Mannion was very good to me in the West Mead game. I tipped him for uh, Man of the Match and first goal score. And I'm going to repeat the feat here, I think. Now that he's got confidence, he has so much ability. Johnny spoke about him earlier on in the show. I think his confidence is going to be sky high now. He knows he's a certain starter. He knows he's one of the main men. What price is Paul Mannion for first goal scorer and man of the match? Paul Mannion for first goal scorer is 9-1. to one, And Paul Mannion for man of the match is also 9-1. to 9-1, to one, so two 9-1 to one shouts. Johnny Doyle, first goal scorer and man of the match? Yeah, um, I, I suppose first goal score, I, I, I differ from you a little bit, lads, and I go with uh, Paddy Brophy um, for Kildare. He, he's done it uh, a couple of years back and just spun spun off of Cooper and, and rattled the net. And I, I think he's in a, in a really good place. He's mad for football. He's been away from the game and he's extremely hungry um, and delighted to be to be back playing for Kildare. So I, I put Paddy Brophy in there and... Uh, man of the match, I think you know um, Brian Fenton is playing fantastic football at the moment, and um, he's in, he's in a really rich vein of form. And if Kildare or have any chance, they're going to have to try and nullify him around the middle. Obviously, we're, we're strong enough around there ourselves, but I think I, I, I give him the nod for man of the match. There we go. So first goal scorer, Paddy Brophy. What price is that, Paddy? Yeah, nine to one Brophy, man of the match, or nine to one Brophy first goal scorer. And man of the match, Brian Fenton. And Fenton is eleven to one for man of the match.